Hi, everybody. This is Alex Lindsay at NAB Show Live. I'm here with, with the illustrious Samuel. Leslie Samuel and Paul Isaacs from uh, Sound Devices. Thanks for having me. It's, it's good to have you. Thanks Thank for you. being here. Yeah, looking forward to it. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Sound Devices has, once again, we call you Sound Devices, but it's not Sound Devices today, right? No, okay. we're here at our video devices, guys. Video, video devices. devices. Yeah, you're so, you're you're the, big, the big thing that I, that I can count <laughs> on you guys is, 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 is imaginative names for your, for your company. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you know, Sound Devices is the company name. Yeah. Right. And when we first launched our first video products about four years ago, the Pix240, uh -huh. a, a huge success uh, yeah. for our first video product. And it seemed to sort of start to make sense to call ourselves something else other than Sound Device. People said, we couldn't use the sound device as in reliable, sound, robust, um, play on words for, that for too much longer. So we decided that we needed to rebrand our video devices, pro our video product line, and video devices were the obvious choice. Right. It, it, makes, no, sense. it makes sense. No, no, it, so. <laughs> it does make sense. It, it, it was complicated because we have a lot of uh, the 240s. And, uh, and it, it, we've explained to someone, they're like, so right, so your video recorder is made by sound, sound devices. devices. <laughs> and they're, 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 so, so it's a good, it's it's a a good move. Confusing, yeah. Very good. So, so now, this is a, looks like a, it looks like you took the 240 and, and just Slims squeezed down. it. <laughs> squeezed it in. Yeah. Um, and really, I mean, so now, and, and, what, and, what, and this is the E5H, is that right? Right, well, what I'm actually going to talk about today is the Pixie series. Okay, it's, okay. It's, Pix Pixie yeah, series. it's actually a, ser a family of three models of on-camera recording mm -hmm. field monitors. Okay. And there's three models. There's two five-inch models and one seven-inch model. In fact, the two five-inch models are the smallest 4K recording monitors in the world. Wow. And so the Pixie 5H is an HDMI only. But it's still 4K. Still 4K compatible. And, and in some ways, that'll be easier for, for, for a lot of people to take a 4K HDMI signal, it's one cable, you plug it in, you're done. Yes. As opposed to all the four combinations, four, BNCs two, or... For SDI, exactly. So right. that is an ideally suited partner to like the A7S and the GH4 DSLR right. style cameras and any other camera that can output 4K. Okay. So the next model up is the Pix E5. It loses the H. Right. And that is still has HDMI, but it adds SDI. Okay. Right. And that's still, and it's a dual SDI. No, 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 that one's single SDI. Yes, single okay. SDI. And then we have the seven inch, which is dual SDI right. and HDMI. And that's E7? E7, you okay. got it. So the E5H, and then we have the E5, which is the next model up, and then we have the E7. Correct, awesome. yeah. And, and the, I mean, so there's a lot of features you typically with, with, right. uh, with sound devices or video devices. There's a lot built into these, these right. little packets. So I, you know, the, um, so you, it's, there's more than just, because what you'd kind of expect, okay, it can record and it can do video. So I assume scopes are included. Right. Yeah, so we actually are calling this a recording monitor. Okay. It's primarily a monitor. It's got the five inch models have really high resolution, 1920 by 1080 um, pixel LCDs. Mm -hmm. Really good brightness, 500 nits, so ideal for outside in sunlight, and um, IPS displays, so great angle of view. Um, the seven inch has a 1920 by 1200 pixel display. Mm -hmm. So again, so these have really great high resolution screens, great for assistant camera operators and anyone who really wants to sort of get into focusing really accurately. The, um, so we have that, and the, the LCDs, because they're so, have such clarity, we can really offer great monitoring tools. So yeah. we've created this suite of tools called Pix Assist, and included in that is all your scopes, so waveform, histogram, vector scope, mm -hmm. um, and we can also um, do LUTs as well. And LUT for the for those of you watching, look that, up that tables. Are, yeah, look up tables, and that what that's going to do is it's going to it's not going to change how the video is being managed, but it's how it's displayed. Exactly. So you're actually able to um, you know see it in a. Uh, rec seven, you know, you know, seven oh nine, or 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 flat, or exactly. However, you're going to look at it. So, we can apply that LUT to the LCD, so it's looking correctly decoded and, right. and seeing it in the correct seven oh nine color space. But we can also apply it to the output as well if we need to feed it downstream. Right now, can you record at record raw, and then and then apply it on the way out? This does not record raw. Well, not record. Okay, so but when you apply that LUT, can you record it without the LUT? Right. And then pass it downstream. Um, to whoever's watching it down further down. That's correct, okay. yes. So, yeah, we have all these monitoring tools, and one of the really cool features, and this is a unique feature, and it's aimed primarily at focus assist and ACs, so uh, focus pullers and ACs, and this is something called, we call TAPZOOM. 
And it's really the fastest way to zoom in to a point of interest and zoom out again. Mm. Now, when you're trying to track a moving uh, talent, sometimes you really need to get in there quick and, and do the focus and, and get, up, get back out again. And the system we have is just so easy and intuitive. It's simply wherever you, uh, whatever point of interest in the image you are, you just tap on it and that goes center screen. You can adjust your focus and then tap again center and you pull out. It's right. really fast. And How much zoom do you get on that when you tap two in? Two or four times. Okay. Um, so tapping in, you can even, if you miss the point, mm -hmm. you can then drag, drag it around. And oh, you can nice. follow the talent that way so as well. So until you tap it again, yeah. it'll, it'll stay zoomed in. Yeah, and then you can drag around or touch the, d the edges of the screen to um, navigate to the outer edges of the image. So if right. I tap it once and it's zoomed in, it's not in the right location, I can move it around, but does the... Does yeah. that, so if I tap it and hold on to it and move it around, it doesn't zoom out? It doesn't out. out, exactly, oh, it knows. Okay. So it's only a quick tap, quick that, tap. that goes in and out. Got it. And the drag, it doesn't exit. So awesome. that's a really cool thing for uh, AC. Um, on top of that, we have obviously guide markers and all the standard things mm -hmm. you expe expect from a professional monitor. Yeah. Um, now, we should talk about recording, because right. obviously sound devices is, uh, and video devices is very well known for its <laughs> recording capability. Uh -huh. um, now, we can record 4K, um, DCI, so 4096, up to 24 frame, and UHD 3840 by 2160, up to 30 frame. Okay. But we can also record the whole range of ProRes codecs, from ProRes Proxy all the way up to ProRes 4x4XQ. We are the only field recording monitor on the planet that currently supports XQ, which is the widest dynamic range, highest quality codec on the market. Mm -hmm. And obviously, those things require very fast storage. Right. So that's what I want to talk about now. This little baby. It looks a bit like a lighter. It does. <laughs> But this is what we can. I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of disappointed that it's not a lighter. <laughs> I, was, I was kind of expecting a lighter here, and what I got was a, a memory card. <laughs> so, so this is USB 3. Yeah, it's USB 3. It looks like a, a fat thumb drive. Uh -huh. And right in fact, up. it is that, but it's way more than that. It's, it's actually a bit of an engineering miracle. And yeah. I'd like to explain why that is. Um, Yes, it is a thumb drive. We call this the speed drive right. because it's very speedy. Okay. And, and, well, and specifically, <laughs> what's, what are what the read-write kind of speeds? Right. So, well, let's talk about that in a minute. In, although this looks like a custom enclosure, it is a custom enclosure, mm -hmm. but inside is an industry standard MSATA mm -hmm. SSD, mm -hmm. which are available everywhere. You know, Amazon, Newegg, you know, so anyone could go out and buy them. This is very easy to pop open, a couple of screws here and a screw here, and it pops open. Just get your MSATA, and you slide it in. in. There. Now, MSATA drives come in sizes from 128 gig all the way up to one terabyte. Okay. So the user has the choice on how much storage you need. And for 4K, you're probably thinking about using a lot. But it's very cost effective. It's not proprietary. Right, so what you're really doing there is you're building the chassis. Yes. Um, and then everyone can build the memory that goes into that. Exactly. Or buy the memory exactly. on Amazon. But, we, but sound devices will supply our own 240 gig version as well. Right. So there'll be an enclosure only version and a 240 gig version. And does that, is, is that included with the purchase no, of these devices? You buy that separately? Correct. Okay. Right. So the real, this is the engineering miracle bit. Okay. okay, so this is just a great thumb drive. You can transfer a gig in like five seconds or so. Oh wow. But when you attach it to the Pixie, whichever one, just clicks in here, nice. clunk click with every trip, very solid, that's not going to move. And that is one of the things, anytime you're putting in USB connections, they're sticking out or they're, you're afraid they're going to get pulled out. So having it just, I, that's the first one I've, right. I've, I think I've actually ever seen that just pops in. Right. Very stable mount. Yeah, so this is the cool thing. Once it's inserted, once this is inserted into Pixie, it's no longer a USB 3. It mysteriously transforms with engineering magic into a SATA-based <laughs> device. Oh, wow. Okay. And that is a totally unique thing that requires, has required a really clever engineering to make that happen. Mm -hmm. But we've done that because it gives us much higher data Faster rates. Speed, right? And now we can do our ProRes 4x4XQ mm -hmm. and we can do 4K to oh, a, yeah. an industry standard non-proprietary drive. Yeah. And, and it also does now, you also have S SD as well or for lower, or is all of the, re all the recording is on these drives? Yes, correct. Okay, all yeah. of them. I thought it, for some reason the I thought SD I saw yeah, one I thought on the I side. Saw that on this the SD here. card okay. here is for loading LUTs. Custom uh, lights, right. but there's um, no recording there. It's it's all recorded to these, these these drives here. Correct. So, 
there's the recording solution. Simple, record your files, take it out, plug it in, insert it to your computer. Becomes a USB drive, yeah. there's USB no, 3. Yeah. No docking station. Awesome. Right. How frustrating. You know, you're always look, running around looking for a docking yeah. station in a bottom drawer somewhere, but now you don't need these. Absolutely. Now, now you, you've got something else over there that, oh, I'm, yes. that I'm attached to. So <laughs> I saw this and I hadn't seen this before. This is, now this, your, your what? Pixel R. It's a Pixel R. So, so what you have here, of course, first of all, you have your XLR in and outs. And, and the, one of the things that's really important is, is that for, for our productions, it is very rare for um, our mics to go through anything other than a sound device's you know, preamp. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that. I mean, we, we own a lot of sound devices <laughs> equipment. Thank you, Alex. Um, yeah, but, but the, um, uh, these are really, really high quality preamps. Absolutely. They're the, the same caliber that goes on all our high end mixers and recorders. So, right. really low noise. They have phantom power supply, limiters. Right. Um, and the limiters are important. A lot of people step over that. But, yeah. but being able to have truly high quality limiters um, in the field. It's a lifesaver. Because you, it, it, well, it also, especially if you're doing web production, one of the things that it means is that we can ride a lot hotter. So a lot of times, typical production is, I'm going to run at negative 12. Mm -hmm. and, and if you would run at negative 12, everyone on, online is going, hey, why is it I so can't quiet? Hear you. I yeah, can't hear exactly. it. I can't hear it. So we'll run negative 6, sometimes even negative 3, you know, and if it just, if it buffers up against there, the we'll, limiter we'll, will hit we'll it. We'll be yeah. okay, yeah. you know. And to design a good limiter so that sounds distortion free, it yeah. requires real expertise, and that's what Sound Devices is famous for. So. Yeah, and, and then and then now on the other side we have, of course, meters. Yep, so big flashing like LEDs. Real, like real yeah. meters. You won't like miss those in the sunlight. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, now it looks like you have control, control, so you have your record, playback, yeah. all the things you would you would have typically with the the 240. Sure. Now I just want to make it clear that you don't need this to put this into record, right? Because on this unit we have these tactile buttons, right? Which have record and transport control functionality, but some people prefer big chunky buttons, mm -hmm. so we've added those to this optional accessory. Yeah, and, and and this this I mean, while you can still put it on your camera, this is off. This is. Off, feels like it's almost for some of the folks that are going to use this like a 240. Yeah. You know, they, I want to continue to use it as a 240, but I just want the smaller form factor or I just want the newer. Yeah. You know, the and it, you know, it bolts on and off really easily. It just screws into the bottom here. Oh, nice. Um, and then there's another mount underneath so you can still mount it on a tripod. Um, very easy. And the same with the 7. It slots underneath like this. So. Now, what, what price points are we looking at for these devices? Well, what do you think? <laughs> what would you pay? <laughs> what would you pay for this? <laughs> to you? <laughs> um, well, the three models, um, they range from the Pixie 5H at mm -hmm. the bottom end e to the Pixie 7 at the top end. Mm -hmm. There's a $400 span. So we start at $1,195, okay. going all the way up to $1,595. The Pixie 5 in the middle is at $1,395. Okay. Speed driver enclosures are $59. Okay. So this is a very cost effective but professional piece. Definitely. Yeah, and, and that's been the, you know, the um, we've really re relied on a lot of this stuff for a long time, but that is a, the, uh, this is a huge price drop from what the 240s were. Mm -hmm. Um, not that, not that I'm bitter. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the technology advances yeah, very no, quickly exactly. these days. You know, and so our engineering capabilities are always advancing. Yeah, no. So it's, it, it, it looks like a, you know, uh, it looks like a fantastic way to do it. Because one of the other things that that is important to us is we don't really record to the cameras. I mean, that's not something we ever. This is a thousand formats and everything else. We just want to put something on the camera. And we usually have to pull it all the way back or, or whatever. But being able to know that we can just the monitor is going to record that and that it's going to be a high quality monitor. Right. I think that you know that I think that that's going to be um, it's, it looks very compelling. You know, and we haven't compromised on build quality. You know, they, it's a typical sound device product: die cast aluminium chassis, mm -hmm. rock solid. You can run a truck over these things. Right. It's actually got a gorilla glass oh, to okay. cover for the LCD, and we've actually done some real tests with this by shooting a potato gun at it. <laughs> <laughs> Of course. Do, no, wait, wait. Now the question is, <laughs> do you have video on YouTube? <laughs> so we're we're going to work on that. But no, the, <laughs> let's put it this way. It's a good way to make mashed potatoes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Very That's good. Awesome. This looks fantastic. Where can Definitely. people find you in the, uh, in the hall? We're in Central Hall, booth 6040. And yeah, online, so. where, where can they go to find you? Videodevices.com. Videodevices.com. Yep. Awesome. Paul, thanks so much for coming. Thank thanks you. for having me. Great. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for watching. Uh, this is NAB Show Live. We'll be right back.